Okay, so so far we have covered up to this section here, right? Everyone understand what we're doing? Later you have plenty time to play lah. Right now, we have gate and compressor. Okay, so I'm going to cover these very, very briefly because you can get good sound without needing to use them. Okay, so we have our mic here. You'll notice that the, the gate section is here, so you just touch, right? And the compressor section is here. The function of a gate is, what, what does a, a real life gate do? Uh, a gate opens and closes and it let things in and let things in. Correct. It lets things in. It lets <laughs> in what you want to let in and it keeps out what you want to keep out. Ah, yeah. Okay? So the function of an audio gate is very similar. Lah. So what it does is when the mic is not being used, it switches the mic off. When it is being used, it switches the mic on, okay? And the advantage of this, that, that really thrilled you. Uh. <laughs> She's like, wow, now I don't have to mix, leh. all right? The, the great advantage of this is when it comes to situations where you are operating near the level of feedback, right? Because the, the gate will, will, when the mic is not in use, it shuts the mic off, right? So. What I'm going to do is, I punch the gate in, and you can see that there is, there is a threshold. Now, do you see this red line? Yes. Yeah? So, basically, when I talk, the gate opens. When I do not talk, it drops the level by 20 dB. So, essentially, the threshold is how deaf you want the mic to be okay so if your threshold is down all the way can you see there's no red line okay so what that means is essentially off as i bring it up okay the gate becomes more and more deaf check one two check check one two check one two now can you hear that now it's it's not always opening uh, it's only opening on the the louder parts of what i say if i keep going up uh, you will see that now it doesn't open at all the more clockwise you turn uh, the more deaf the gate becomes and the more anti-clockwise the the more um the, yeah that's right so the idea is that you want to have it such that it closes when the mic is not being used but when it is used, it straight away opens up. Um, attack release that we will discuss some other time. Okay, let's let's have somebody fiddle with the gate. Who's next, Myra? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's good for MCs. Uh. It's very good. Yeah, it's fan. Was, yeah. Oh, okay. annoying MCs yeah. like feedback okay. so much. So this is the. <laughs> <laughs> you are an MC. Uh, I am not an annoying one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So you want it such that it shuts when you are not speaking. So okay. I I'll show you how to do this, okay? First, so you don't talk and you adjust this until it closes. Ah, okay. Okay, now start talking. Okay, so once I start talking, then how do I know how You, you keep I rolling it up, okay? That's Rolling right. Rolling it out like yeah. that. And you have to talk continuously. So uh, until it starts cutting me off, That's then I right. turn it off, is it? Yes. So like over here, 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 here. Oh, ah, oh, okay, now off. you go back. Okay, am I cut? Oh, I'm not cut off anymore. All right, yeah. Okay, Ooh. let me spoke, we spoke. Can you hear me? Oh, you all like, all, all, all I'm seeing like the backstage of you. Hey, yeah. let's scream out. <laughs> okay, okay, this is really cool. Yeah, okay. And we just, we just quickly demonstrate. Huh? <laughs> okay. So, you're cool. Unless somebody starts talking and opens up everything. Okay. <laughs> so, that's, that's, our, that's our gate. Alright? So, again, this one, more expert. You can go and uh, investigate what all of this is. Alright. Now, let's look at the compressor section. Who knows what a compressor is? It, yeah? Squishes, squishes, squishes stuff. Compress stuff. Compress the volume. Yeah, what does that mean? So it's like, I don't know, I think the practical use is when a singer sing too high, you sort of limit the volume. Correct. So what a compressor does is it makes the louder sounds softer, basically. Okay? So if this is what we call your dynamic range, this is your softer sound and this is your louder sound. The compressor makes the louder ones a bit softer. Okay? 
Some people think that it also makes the softer sounds louder. It does not. What it allows you to do is it allows you to reduce the dynamic range and then turn everything up such that your average level is louder, okay? And this is very good for those screamy type singers as well as people who like to whisper and then shout. So with a compressor, you sim just like the gate, uh, you see you have a, th this, this is short for threshold. Threshold is where the compressor kicks in. Ratio is how much compression are you giving it. So something like, uh, I'll adjust to two is to one, okay. So a two is to one ratio means that for every two dB over the threshold, the compressor only allows a one dB increase. So, as you can see, uh, I'll switch it in. Now, the I'll bring the threshold down until it starts. Okay, so the, the readout that you want to look at is here. The, the red line shows when it is compressing. Check, check, one, two, two. Can you hear, it's co can you see it's compressing there? Yeah. yeah. You can also look here if you want. So what this is doing is the louder bits, it's making softer, right? Once again, this is no compression. Check, check, one, two, one, two, one, two, more compression. The important thing about compression is that you do not want to overdo it. And because if you overdo it, then you will end up with no dynamic range, right? And it will sound like... The same like Yeah, the same all the way, exactly. And things like attack release, again, the main things to know are your threshold and your ratio. This, this only adjusts the threshold, okay? Okay, so what you do is you turn clockwise until you see some compression happening. Oh, okay. Yeah. Test one, two, one, you, can you hear the gate is cutting her off? Okay, one, so we'll turn the one, gate off. Two. Yeah. One, two, one, two, ah, one, two, good. one, two, one, two. Let's think one, two. Eh? Yeah, keep going. Hello, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, you're going the wrong direction. I told you wrong. Go the other way, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, testing. Test, test, one, ah, two, yeah, yeah. One, now there's so much one, compression two, that you can't two. hear anything she's saying. Okay? Yeah. So basically with a compressor, you have to bring the threshold down to the point where it kicks in. Alright? Yeah. So that's, that's quite a bit of compression. Check, check, one, two. I personally, I start at two is to one and then I adjust from there. With drums, you need a higher ratio because drums are very dynamic. With singers, you want a lower ratio, right? Drums, you may find yourself working at six is to one, eight is to one, somewhere up there, depending on. And you'll find that when you compress drums, uh, they sound so much better. They sound really, really punchy, okay? So we have done gate and compressor. Pan, everyone understands pan, all right? So pan left comes out from there, pan right comes out from there. Okay, good. <laughs> So I've just plugged in to the back. I'm using a, a mini jack to two quarter cable, right? And I'm connecting to 25 and 26. So once again, you can connect this in a number of ways and I'll show you. So to begin with, we're connecting to two mono channels. Now, because remember, the gain is preset to halfway. Alright, so very often with a stereo source like this, you'll need to bring your gain down a bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select 25 because that is my first of the two and I'm going to pair the channels. Alright, so, oops, not that one, okay, uh, keep forgetting and we'll apply that so that our channels track together. So because they are paired, when I bring the gain down on this channel, Right, it also brings the gain down on the second channel. And I'm just gonna, let's see. You'll notice when I PFL one, they are both PFL, right? So we're gonna just make sure that we're not too high. All right, so then we can, right? We've got our, got our music there. Hello, Lee. <laughs> All right. So it's the same thing with pretty much everything, right? You can use the same, High pass filter. It was 
I'm sure that you, YouTube bots will get me for this, alright? Flying out across the great divide. Same thing, like, all right. And so you can, you know, you can gate it, you can compress it, you can do whatever you want, like, right? So that's using two mono channels. Now I'll show you how to connect to the stereo in and then we'll do this guy. So on the back of the mixer, you have two stereo channels. They are just two quarter inch. La. So I'll connect to that. If you connect to just the left connector, it is mono, right? So you can either do left and right or you can do mono. Now, the stereo connectors or the stereo channels are found on the second layer which is the layer that we haven't worked with yet so we press this button here can someone press right okay so you can see that we have stereo one two and three so the advantage of using the stereo channels is that you only need to use one fader for both of them so if i select right you can see that these the stereo channels, the default gain is 0 dB, meaning no gain. So it's more set up for things like iPod, line level devices, okay? You can connect a keyboard here if you want to. So if you, on the gain, if you go, you're actually padding the gain. So you have like minus. On the mono channels, there's no minus, right? And so this is designed for like really, really hot stuff. And if we bring it up, that's our and same thing you have stereo eq all right you have gate compressor everything the same all right. so mute that's your stereo channel now the third stereo input is found on the front of the mixer which is here and this one is designed specifically for ipod iPad type devices, right? So you connect to that. This is a little bit wiggly, and mm -hmm. way. okay. <clears throat> Start that. All right. So you can see it's come up here. All right. Yeah, and it's the same, All right. So you select and then. What's up, you guys? It's Rachel Black. My album Spotify. Okay. And make sure to add your favorite song to your personal playlist. Same and thing. Share right? It's just that the the, the input is there, lah. Yeah, that's right. So this is designed specifically for mini jack type stuff, lah. Yeah, yeah. So it's the same. Yeah. And doing this is uh, it's a good way to get to know the EQ section, lah. All right. Now, USB connection. Okay, now, I gotta tell you a couple of things about this. The, the mixer is a little bit finicky. It will only accept discs that it has formatted, okay? So if you want to use a disc, a thumb drive, you plug it in and then, can you see this icon here? Right, it will come up to show you that it has detected, it has detected a drive, all right? That's right. So then what you do is you go to home, and you select Q drive. Q drive is this thing here. Okay. Now, the first thing that you need to do uh, for using your own disc is you have to format the disc, right? And the instructions are in the, in the user manual. I think it's under setup. There. 
Cool. Utility Q drive format. Ah, there you go. Great. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> I told you you'd find it faster than me. All right. Yeah. So yeah. So you want to format it, lah. Okay. Right. It's under setup. Right. So setup, you can see that it has lots and lots of different, you know, all of this, lah, which we won't go into today. So once you have formatted it, it will create a series of directories or folders, lah. And you can see that when you put the drive into your computer it will look a bit like this okay and mm. you see it says usb mtk that stands for for multi-track so you stick all the music that you want to play inside that folder so then when it comes to that you go to home q drive and they will all show up here can you see it says track 10 right so if i want to play i just hit play and this will route it through stereo 3, if I recall correctly. Hmm, let's see, uh, where is it being routed? You can see it's playing there. Um, ah, I, no, you know why? Okay, the reason that there's no signal is that I have to tell stereo 3 to take the signal from the Q drive, all right? So we go back to processing. Uh, here, I press source. Now, can you see here? I need to go here and I have to tell it to take okay, it from USB. USB. Oh, so now you see the signal. Now you see it's damn hot, okay? So basically you want to, so I'll get rid of this and I want to back that way, way down, okay? And I think there's some techno on this last so. That's not techno crap, okay? Yeah. <laughs> In order to change tracks, uh, you gotta you can either go forward, alright? Ah, uh, this is the techno crap. <laughs> right? Or you press stop and then you press here and then you use the rotary here. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, here. Right? You use this to select lah. So you can see I've got some. If there's a track name, it will show up here. Lah. Like for example that one lah. Then you just click select and you press. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, la. All right, and then obviously pause, la, Right now, the the problem with this is that obviously if you are using this as a control surface, uh, you cannot see other things, right? Yeah. So you can't see channel or whatever. But you know, option, la. You know, there's many many options here. Okay, so that is playing back from the USB drive. Now, since we're here. The nice, the other thing is that you can record directly to the USB drive. Okay, so we've got our mic plugged in. I'll go back to my channel, which is 20. And I'll go to the, the layer. Check, check, one, two. Okay, so I'll, actually I don't have to go there lah. But from here, all right, if I, this is, can you see it says stereo record? Right, so if I want to record, I press this. And the first thing is it will say, it is, it will say armed. Right, meaning is standing by to record oh. la. Right, so then you just press play and it will be recording la. So it's recording what I'm saying now. Uh, hello Naresh, you're looking very handsome this evening. Uh, yeah, nice of you to join us. Uh. Yeah. So then I press stop. And if I want to replay, uh, let me see. I think it's from here you choose recording. Mm, then it should it should be this one here. La. Right? Yeah. Let's see what it what it has to say. Uh, hello Naresh, you're looking very handsome this evening. It's nice of you to join us. Okay? Again you have I know, yeah. So easy eh. Why do we click click click? Mm, yeah. Alright. So and the other thing about this board is that because it is a it is essentially a computer with faders, okay? It can act as the front end to a to Pro Tools or whatever you want. Alright, so you can go out from the USB and you have a 32 channel front end to your Pro Tools rig and you can play back your Pro Tools via this, meaning that you can have you can use the EQ and again that's all fairly advanced. Okay, so we have covered USB playback. Any questions about that? Can you charge with the USB? <laughs> 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 
Oh, 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 I, I believe there is a disclaimer somewhere in the manual that says don't plug your smartphone in here. <laughs> you will, you will no, it won't, but it simply it won't it will not be detected because this board that particular connector is designed for stuff that the board has formatted. Oh. So if you format your smartphone with it, oh. I don't know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly all the names or all the CIA agents will come out of her phone. Can, can you just turn out the USB like this? Yeah, you can. It it's, it's yeah, no sure. Need to, yeah. No need, no need to eject. Yeah, you can see it just, it just vanishes, lah. Yeah. Is there a way to save settings? Uh? Yes, there For is. The various channels. Oh yeah, absolutely. We'll move on to that. So again, yeah. from here under Home, uh, you can see it's Home FX Scenes. All right. So. The mixer uses what are called scenes, other people, other companies call them snapshots or whatever. Let's say that we want to set the way the mixer is currently set up. Okay, let's bring up channel 20. So let's call this, uh, let's call this, we call this scene, scene one, lah, right? Okay. And press OK, then we press store and it says override scene one, it will always say that, right? even though there's nothing there, lah, right? Then you say yes, and you can see there, right? So now let's make a couple changes, lah, right? Uh, just for fun. Lah. So now, when we come back right, and we want to recall, right? You simply, you, you select this and you see it says recall, right? Then you press re, I'll make sure I'm on that layer, right? Press recall. Recall scene one, right? Yes, and it recalls. So, mm. and basically, it will recall all parameters that are recallable. Uh. So, it recalls not just your fader positions; it recalls your gain, your EQ, your compressor settings, everything. And that's the strength of digital. Uh. So, what that means is not only can you save and recall your settings here you could save them to a thumb drive, go to another QU32 mm. and mix on that board. So if you had four venues, right, you can move between them and so on. It is completely cross-compatible with the 24 and 16 channel versions. So you can do a show here, you can go to a 16 channel, load the same file. Obviously, channels over 16, it will ignore, okay? Now, while we are here, do you see this button here? Reset Mix Settings. Mm. Now, what this allows you to do is it allows you to do a, what we call a soft reset. So, you press and hold this and you can see it basically says it will reset. Now, if you do a reset, it will basically reset all the things that are resettable. So, I'm going to do that now. So, you see that now, all your names are gone, mm. right? So let's see 20, right? So now it's all back to default. So now I've just wiped out all your hard work. Uh. <laughs> Not really. If I want to go back there, what do I do? Okay, I go to scenes and I recall scene one. Yes. And now we're all, right? So we're all back, lah, right? Before. Wow. Yeah, wow. that's right. Lah. <laughs> yeah. So, yes. How do you move the scenes into a USB? Uh, the way that you do that, I believe, is through the, you go to setup and then utility. Lah. And then um, there's a, is it USB data? Ah, no, it's under scenes. Lah. Mm. Yeah, that's right. So, if, if, there's a, if there's a USB in, it will show up here. Lah. So, then it's a matter of saving it across. You'll work it out in, in 10 seconds. Lah. If you come to the mixer and you don't know who has been working with it, it's very good to go there and you just reset. Then you know that everything is back to the default and then you can start mixing from there. And because everything is saved, whoever was mixing before should have done a save. If they didn't, it's their own fault. Lah. All right? So that is what we call a soft reset. Lah. There is also a hard reset where you hold down these two buttons and then you power the console on. What that will do is it will wipe everything. So it will wipe all your scenes, all complete 
factory reset. This one here does not wipe the scenes it just brings the the operating surface back to its previous state so the last thing that i have to show you is how to shut down the board all right because you must remember this is a computer you cannot just turn it off basically you have to tell it i need you to stop writing to the hard disk and i need you to shut down the various engines that you use la. there's a motherboard and there's like two or three separate processes so what you do is is that you go to home I think you will off amp first yeah you <laughs> you should off the amp lah alright so then you go from home alright you go to home so home home because under home there's a number of different tabs uh. then you hit shut down you can also do lock surface uh. basically will mean that it it's a sort of anti-tamper device lah. So if you once you unlock it all goes back to mm -hmm. so if you need to go toilet or what you can lock the surface lah you press shut down and then shut down console yes right then after that you can power off from behind right mm. and then come back just power on la. 